had all these shows. Like, I had a bunch of shows coming up. Um, plus, like, the open mics that I do. But yeah. I had a bunch of gigs. And, um, like, poetry and comedy. And they all got canceled. I feel like I kind of tapped into a... I don't a fear or something like something happened at the it did because I was all like no and then uh my sister uh was feeling really sick mm -hmm. and um she was living in LA she's living in LA and then she came home to stay with my parents so I was really scared because I was she's like I think I have corona I was like well don't come home yeah <laughs> and she did anyway so I got I went into this like deep like, oh, no, what if my parents die and my, you know, whatever. And I kind of just went into those emotions really deeply at the beginning. And I did a lot of, like, nighttime meditation. Yeah. Which was really positive. And I just kind of, like, went into those, like, emotions and then found these other sort of places where I was, like, distracting myself. You know, just kind of, like, um, like, like things, okay, I'll put that off to later or unconscious thoughts basically thoughts yeah. that i didn't deal with yeah that still affected my overall happiness and interactions with people and other things so i felt like i really went into those a lot and feel very clean from them <laughs> even though it was challenging it you know yeah challenging thing to face has any um has any writing come out of this time for you um i wrote i wrote a couple yeah i wrote um i wrote a poem called falling in love with being quarantined and <laughs> then i wrote uh 10 things that you can do while you're quarantined yeah and then i came up with this video called the self-love news that i put out which was just like um you know instead of like the news it's just like my name is justin and i love myself but it's just like <laughs> <laughs> five minutes of like being loving to myself and mm -hmm. and other things that you can do to love yourself how about um taking your work online have you done much of that for, for some reason like being online has always been more challenging for me than doing shows because that's how I was like I was you know I did a lot of shows so okay. doing a show is very easy for me but doing a Facebook live is a little like it's not as it's not as fun or mm -hmm. as natural, I would say, for whatever reason. So I saw, I think on Facebook, you posted something about bombing with a um, online or comedy from your living room. And yeah, I'm not sure how much that was a joke, um, but it it was funny in and of itself. I think I think the joke was that at least when you when you do a show in a venue, you can leave afterwards. But when it's your own living room, you're stuck there. <laughs> yeah, it was funny because I had a I had people reach out and be like, "I'm sorry," encouraging words, which is yeah. really nice. But it it was just like kind of a joke. Like honestly, I kind of got into stand up to bomb. Mm -hmm. So bombing is I've got you know I don't usually bomb anymore because you know I've done it for a long time, but. So bombing isn't this thing that is that big of a deal. But I mean, there was that feeling at first of like, because I, I noticed when I was, I was doing like newer material and I just noticed the, uh, you know, the thing go from like 14 to seven to four, you know. <laughs> I was like, damn, I am bombing. People are not liking this. But at the same time, dis despite the, the joke that you made about it, I would think that there is well, you're not having the audience reaction when you're doing something like through Facebook Live. At the same time, you're not experiencing firsthand negative reactions. Yeah. I mean, I think that I would be, uh, I'm more fueled by the positive reactions. Yeah. Like negative reactions don't really do, like if I do a bit, a, sh a joke that doesn't work, it doesn't really affect me. Mm -hmm. um because i think i got into it in a way of bombing when i when i first started um when i got laughs i got uncomfortable mm -hmm. and i would try to say something to not get a laugh because what I, I i'm a weird i was a weird person and uh so bombing doesn't but but having the laughter is really fueling yeah. so that's something that is definitely way different i mean it feels really good so i mean i think that you kind of have to have a sense of like delusion if you're going to do stand up, you know, to nobody. 
What have you learned about yourself as an artist during this time? A uh, wonderful thing that I learned was more about promoting. Like, I feel like promoting at a, at a venue is really easy for me. Like, I can go up and be like, hey, buy my books, and I don't feel weird. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, again, on Facebook, I don't feel as, or online, I don't feel as natural promoting, which I'm learning how to do. And there was a comedy competition. And um, uh, the, the disclaimer that Asheville uh, put on. And um, I thought my video was really funny. And then I saw this uh, one person's like get a lot more votes than me because they were, you know, it was just, it was the online who could, who could basically have more people vote for them. Oh, right. Okay. So there was this part of me that felt like bad because I, because I feel like I've lost a lot of um, comedy competitions because I had this part of me that was like, I'm not going to bring people. Yeah. I'm just going to do it on my talent alone. Yeah. And that's not really a good idea because the <laughs> right. whole point is to get the audience's vote yeah so I was like telling it to my mom and she was like and my mom's a very basic person but sometimes basic people can be incredibly brilliant yes and she was like well then it seems like you need to make more friends and I was <laughs> like you're right so I just kind of was like I'm going to even if I annoy people I'm going to win this competition yeah. So I just like hit all these people up to vote for me and constantly posted on it. And by the end of the time, I felt like really like sick of it, but I did win the competition. So that was cool. <laughs> what kind of art has been essential to you during this time? Um, what's really been helping me get through is not, and I kind of consider everything art, but this book by uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Oh, okay. Becoming Supernatural. Mm-hmm has been incredibly helpful for me. Um, I'm, a, I'm really into spirituality. Yeah. And um, I love like Abraham Hicks and all those kinds of uh, people. But um, with Dr. Joe Dispenza, it's very, um, it's very like one, it, it really, he really goes into like the scientific aspect of like what a negative thought does to your brain. What do you think that the other side of this quarantine will look like? I can say what I hope it looks like. Yeah. I hope it looks like that people have more compassion, mm -hmm. that our com government changes, um, that we understand that like we're all in this together. I mean, of yeah. course, you know, like not like people in the mansions and things like that, but you know, and that I, I just I just hope it brings like an overall um, respect and love and compassion to each other that wasn't there before. So many people have been out of work and suffering, and it's going to be maybe a bit of a difficult climb back. What what do you what do you hope that we can bring from this time that might be a helpful tool moving forward? We need to understand just the way this our system is not a it's a shaky system it's not a stable system so it's about bringing out more things that can make people um feel stable yeah uh for example like free health care how much better would our society be if people felt healthy so I just think there's a lot of foundations that we need to change. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, just countless. And I hope that that brings about change for people.